while ago I read one thought that uh, were my intention and it was that providing your CV and relying on CV nowadays is something that is um, outdated and your new CV is are your thoughts that you shared, your content and your projects, your code and the things you have done. So I decided to share with you one interesting thing, interesting to me that I've been working on last month. And the more interesting part is that I'm not a Windows guy. I haven't touched Windows since 2006 year. And um, I have never touched PowerShell. And I wouldn't say that had much experience with Packer to that particular case. Um, <clears throat> so first I will split that to three parts. The first one is to describe what was the flow of the Packer and the software that's, that we are using and what we are creating with Packer. The second one is how I resolved the issue and was what was my motivation to do that because there was uh, one moment that I almost quit and um, I started from scratch but we'll talk about that later and the third one is the final solution um, I will try to be quick but not so quick that you don't understand nothing um, so we have one EC2 instance that is with Windows and we install Excel and some softwares there that are doing some calculations and everything is created automatically from Packer in multiple environments. So this Packer creates the EBS volume, uh, the machine and the EBS volume that's copied across the regions. Uh, after the machine is created, it clones uh, Git repo, but not with Git command because Git was not available in the Windows. and nobody has an access directly to the machine which was one of the main issues because it makes the debugging harder <clears throat> and when you don't have the suitable tools in that machine you can't do the job so um once once the machine is created uh zip ball of that particular git repo is downloaded and then archived and later uh the next Packer provisioners that are installing some softwares are used operating locally with these files and so they don't clone the repo again but operating on the file system the problem was that uh, every time the <coughs> the builds are run uh, they produce a different result one time you have that repo cloned and the zip file downloaded another time you don't have it and you can't unzip it but the powershell script didn't produce any error so it was a little bit harder to uh to make a difference if cloning is uh if cloning of the repo is the problem in the download or the unzipping of the file <clears throat> with some comments in the powershell script in the powershell script uh um we, we notice that uh, when we list the directories, the, the zip file is not there, so the problem was the cloning, hence uh, the unzipping uh, did not have the chance to unzip the files because uh, it does not exist. The problem is that when you are uh, using certain syntax, one time it produced no value error, <clears throat> and no other error uh, another time this provisioner with that particular script is was just skipped and moved to the next one and i was curious if that was a packer issue if that was powershell issue or that was some kind of permission issue in the windows or it's composed of all of them uh, <clears throat> so all of them were very possible and I don't think the problem is just so complex, but when you don't have access and you don't have Windows skills and PowerShell skills and that particular project operates with 
for git repos so uh, the environment variables were defined in one of them uh, the packer repo is fetching and creating user variables from these environment variables and for all the provisioners we create environment variables that are reading the packer user variable so when you first look at that code you are frustrated uh, <clears throat> and i was even thinking that uh, there is something to do with passing the variables across the repos and the packer and that was not appropriate but after reading some documentation it turned out that this is fine uh, one of the possibilities that i told also uh, and removed all the variables and hard coded everything and after some repeatance of uh, running the builds it produced again the new value error which means that the problem is no, are, were not the variables uh, i took some notes uh, yeah so the other thing that i checked were the settings of the package because <clears throat> there are some timeouts uh, and it was across the three different repos as I mentioned. Uh, with the timeouts and sleep, the issue still arised. The problem was that you can't always catch that problem because one time it happens, another time not. And if we think uh, logically, even if the problem was the variables, there is no way to me uh, one time the variables to be there, another time not to be. And we also did an echo of these variables and they were always um, producing their result and outputted their values in the code build. So I excluded that as a possibility. Uh, since changing the packer settings also did not resolve the issue, uh, one of my fellows uh, changed the syntax of the PowerShell, which made things a little bit better, but I think that was uh, work because this is just eventual consistencies and from 10 builds we have two or three failing. And after we saw that syntax change will not resolve the issue and to be honest, I don't think this is the right way to proceed with such a scenarios because you mask the issue but you will not understand the the core reason and the culprit so what we also tried and it was not so clever maybe but it was a good experience to me was to rewrite that script into python uh, the problem was that the Python script was uploaded to that particular repo because that was the procedure and the company operates in that way. And we still have had to download that Python script uh, <laughs> through PowerShell because Packer does not provide a way to execute directly uh, Python provisioners. Uh, <clears throat> so we still had to invoke web requests or web client in PowerShell to download that uh, Python script, but what I was thinking about was that it there may be some difference in the content length and the number of files in their size that you download. So uh, I tried both with invoke client, web client on PowerShell and invoke web request and web client. These are the two different ways to download in PowerShell a file. Uh, no neither one of them did the trick and even with python we faced the same issue uh, one pros of that approach was that we have more experience with python and i don't have any with uh, powershell so if i decide to work more or create something in the code it would be a lot easier to me uh, but what that steps uh proof to us was that it's not a code issue so it seems to be also not windows issue because if it was a windows permission to that particular directory uh, no one of the builds would pass would have passed uh, and the final step was again because we always use uh, the debug 
option to the packer and it didn't produce a packer issue. So we see that uh, Windows PowerShell is returning the issue, but new value error uh, doesn't make any sense to me. And uh, what? Uh -huh. Okay, I'll, I'll first uh, mention that I just I started to look for another approach. I almost quit and passed that to hand out that task to one of my fellows that has more experience with Windows. But after I saw that uh, he's, uh, he faced some difficulties to resolve that, I said to me, hey, that's your job. You have to resolve the things that nobody wants or, or uh, have the ability to resolve and that somehow very motivated me uh, and I started from scratch and g went through all the things that I may have missed uh, walking into github issues there was actually there were a lot of topics but no particular solution uh, initially, I excluded that to be a winner issue because we are already connected exactly before that. But I decided to upload from the container that Packer is installed to, uh, to upload from that container to the Windows machine that particular file and see if that makes any difference. And what I saw there is that WinRM is dying and produce a... a connection refused error on the WinRM port and this port was allowed in the security groups of AWS so either I thought that there is some kind of port forwarding to the SSL port which was not allowed or it dies exactly after we were connected and it was the second one uh, but what popped up in my mind was that Hey, I didn't see that error when we are cloning with PowerShell and we use the approach with the download file instead of uploading from the container. But is it possible the, the reason to be the same, but we don't see that error when we are downloading the file? So I tried again to activate some verbal logging of the packer. And what I saw that uh, it happens with one variable Again, before packer build command, I think it was packer walk equal one or ten. Uh, this is the level of debugging uh, and the logging. Um, so, what that showed me and is that was that uh, when new value error happened in the invoke script and the cloning script, exact before that, uh, exact before that. I saw the error about connection refused of WinRM, so I was almost pretty sure there that uh, the reason for both uploading and downloading to not work is the same, but you are seeing the error only when you upload the file. So I reverted the Python and all the changes and started looking again into the WinRM and if we are doing some settings outside of this repo where I was looking for and outside the Packer JSON file because there were only two settings regarding WinRM and I found that we are bootstrapping the Packer with, uh, with user data file that is making uh, and changing some WinRM settings and it does WinRM stop, then WinRM start. So uh, immediately in my mind pop up that we may hit somehow sometimes the moment that we stop there in WinRM exact after, uh, exactly uh, right after the, the machine was started and we move to the next provisioner. So I initially uh, commented out that bootstrap file to see if we'll have WinRM connection at all because I'm, I, I read that it's built in Windows and we may not need that anymore. So I started the build, WinRM was connected, everything was fine, the build has passed. 
I repeated that 20 times and we didn't have a failing build meanwhile. So I started looking into these scripts and what they are actually doing. And since we have 100% from the pass uh, from the builds past and green uh i think that this script is not needed anymore according to what the bootstrap script was doing but after i asked some fellows what's the purpose of that and if they are familiar they provided me an information that this is to set up a winrm on the permanent machine that we are using later after the builds and then I was almost sure that we don't need that because this bootstrap file was used only on the temporary instance that we were creating uh, on, on the builds when the builds are running. Later we have separate user data file and if we want to, um, to configure the WinRM we have to do that on the right user data file, on the right user uh, on the right git repo that's configuring the permanent machine, not the builds. And um, <clears throat> yeah, if if we need that in the future, there may be some kind of reordering of the packer and the execution. I saw that some of the people are solving this issue with sleep for a minute. We had the sleeps for 50 seconds, but perhaps they were not enough. And I'm not a huge fan of um, that approach, but at least I think it was a good debugging and wanted to show the step and the issue because you see how something on first glance complex that took me around month or two was super easy and in most cases you are the culprit and your configuration.